Welcome to the Toronto Livings Podcast, a conversation about all things Toronto with a focus on real estate, the culture, and of course, the food. I'm Mark Savell. And I'm Joey Virgilio. And we're realtors with Sage Real Estate working together as a Toronto Livings team with a focus on helping you buy better, sell higher, and of course, having a little bit of fun along the way. Hello, Joe. Hello, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Episode eight. Episode eight. Feeling good. Great. Feeling great. Episode eight. Feeling great. Oh, I like. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. Rhyme okay. scheme. Okay, I like it's okay. it. It's okay. We're off to a good start. I'm good with that. <laughs> How you been? Uh, good. Good. Uh, uh, this has been a very interesting week. This week. Oh gosh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, lots kind of got lots are lots ha- is happening with the. Between the both of us. Yeah, spill the tea. What are we talking about here? So we got right now condition. We're in condition, right? Conditional period on my end. Fingers crossed. But something's happening. We're no, getting very yeah. close. No celebrations, but you did something good. Yes. Amazing. Uh, and how about yourself? Oh, I had such a good week. <laughs> <laughs> I finally won a bidding war. Hey. <laughs> that was such a huge relief. Um Maybe let's start with where do we eat? What do we see? Let's keep it. Yeah. yeah. Let's keep it light. Yeah. Let's keep it light at the yeah. beginning. Should we talk about what we're talking about? All right. So once you get past our banter, we're going to be talking about how to be the world's greatest seller. Yes. That is what this episode is about. Help me help you <laughs> be the greatest seller. Some tips and tricks of, of things we've seen and some advice we can yeah. part on how to do it. Yep. But people want to hear what we ate. Well, that's the, yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's why. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what this podcast is about. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> cool, man. Where'd you go? Uh, so this week I had my dad's 60th. Ah, yeah. bon complean. Yeah, it was, uh, it was good. It was really nice, actually. We went to um, Petro's, Petro's 82. Never heard of it. Yeah, Greek restaurant, authentic Greek restaurant. Where is um, it? It is like basically right near the, the theater district. Mm. Um, so it's right, if I'm not mistaken, it's like right on King Street. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Petros. I wonder, do you know Petros the Pelican? No. Was there a Pelican in there? There wasn't a Pelican. <laughs> Petros is like the Pelican in Greece. Well, I don't know. I mean, Greece is big. Like, I think it's in Mykonos. There's a Pelican, like yeah. a bird called Petros. Yeah, okay. And like people feed Petros. Okay, so, so that's for sure what it's about. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like Greek, authentic Greek. It was really damn good. Nice. Um, Did you have Pelican? No, unfortunately. <laughs> Shucks. <laughs> Chef special. <Okay. laughs> uh, no, but it was it was really good. I uh, If you do find yourself there, um, I would say... You're the smashing kind of, deals, aren't you? I, <laughs> it's okay. Things are going it's on. Okay. Um, no, but if you do find yourself there, definitely the calamari was next level. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Big question for you. Yeah. Are you a fried or grilled calamari guy? Okay. Okay. I am, I am a fried guy. Okay. Uh, but this was grilled. And like done, it was. It had a, a lemon brown butter sauce with it, Ooh. and it was. It was like it was incredible. Yeah, it was really, really good. I'm in the same camp as you. Okay, fried calamari for life. Yeah, but when you do the grilled right, <laughs> game over. Yeah, no, 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 it's it, that's the thing. Is it's like it's you can do grilled very wrong. Yeah, uh, like sticky, spongy, rubbery. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. No, cool. Glad we agree on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you guys go out after? Yes, we did. Actually, we went to uh, we went to see Hamilton. The the play. The play. Yeah. yeah, the not, big, not the city outside not of the Toronto. City. We didn't just drive out to <laughs> Hamilton after. <laughs> we saw the play. Okay, thoughts. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, you I don't, don't get the hype. Okay, I get it. I get it, but like I don't yeah. get the hype of it. Yeah, uh, and it was so funny. My dad was like. So, I mean, we had a couple of drinks at the, at the, sure. the restaurant and it was literally like, it was a couple of silent moments where I was praying to God, my dad wouldn't start snoring. Cause he was like <laughs> legitimately <laughs> sleeping beside me. <laughs> and my, my, el- my sister was like elbowing him every once in a while. <laughs> Whose idea was Hamilton? Uh, it was his. Oh, that's the best part. Is he's like, oh, we're going to Hamilton, and then just like completely was. <laughs> so my mother-in-law, shout out to my mother-in-law Ruby. She listens to every episode. Okay, oh, which nice. puts insane pressure on me because I'm like, don't screw this up. <laughs> um, shout out to mother-in-law Ruby. She also was super hyped with Hamilton. Oh, really? Okay, but we saw it on like Disney Plus. Okay, and I. Th- I don't think she fell asleep, but she was not having it. She's like, ah, this is next. Same, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there was something about the hyper fast pace, constant hyper fast pace that they were moving. Okay. That, like right when we sat down, it was like, it was hard to get grasp of what was happening. Yeah. And then just like, it never stopped. So the keep up was tough. Hard to follow along. Yeah. 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 Noted people of the podcast. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hamilton the city, check it out. Hamilton the play, yeah. not for everyone. Yeah, 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 fair, fair. Um, yeah, I went out with Jason Friesen. Uh, oh, so I saw that post. Yeah, Jason the Freeze Friesen. I call him the Freeze. <laughs> the Freeze. Everyone needs a name. He's the Freeze. Because <laughs> um, he freezes those rate holes. Like, it's nobody's <laughs> business. Nah, he called me, like, last minute on uh, what day was the Raptors game. I think it was Tuesday. Yeah. And he's like, hey, man, I got an extra ticket. You want to come watch the game with me? And this was their playing game, so they had to win to move on. Right. Spoiler alert. <laughs> they lost. <laughs> um <laughs> But it was a while. Like, the atmosphere was crazy. The first three quarters, they were killing it. We're feeling good. Like, oh, this is going to happen. Like, we're going to win. Yeah. Fourth quarter, my cousin uh, had a hookup at a box in the, oh. at the thing. Yeah. So she's like, come to the box. Oh. Like, yeah. So we live in the high life. Me in the freeze, <laughs> doing our thing. Go up in the box, and they just fall apart. I think it was bad juju on our part. We should have left our seats. I'm I'm bad with that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. all mental game. 100. Yeah. percent What like, you do makes them win or lose. Always, yeah. I control the universe at all times. When Italy played in the Euro Cup, didn't wash my jersey. Still oh yeah, washed. okay. Yeah, yeah I'm committed. one of those. Yeah. 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 Um, so we're up there, and Pascal Siakam had is like a couple. I think 30 seconds left. He's got three free throws to make to tie the game. Right. Tire win. Whatever it was, it was a must make free throw situation. And I remember hearing this like, like some, it wasn't this one, but it was some wild sound. And I'm like, who in the right mind would be making a sound when Siakam's taking the shot? When we were in the other seats, we were in the lower bowl, great seats, but I didn't hear this. But we're in, when I was in this box, I yeah. kept hearing this scream. He missed the shot. Oh. Turns out DeMar DeRozan's daughter, who's like probably like, I don't know, 12-ish years old, was screaming to throw off our players. <laughs> and like... I, I mean, it's all fun and games. It's, it's, you know, but apparently on Twitter, she had to get escorted for her own safety to the team bus. Oh, get out of here. I don't know if that's just Twitter hype to make like a story or yeah, not. Yeah, right, right, right. But there are loser fans, so it's possible in that case. <laughs> but like, holy crow. That's oh my a, that's God. That's intense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah, so I did that. And uh, Tuesday, we had a salad. Oh, yeah. We had salad. Yeah, we had, we we had, had a salad. salad. Team yeah, us. Yeah, <laughs> We went to Mandy's. Mandy's. Yeah, Mandy's. I shoveled that salad. Did you get the lumberjack or the cob? I got the lumberjack. The lumberjack. <laughs> so fitting. If I ever open, if we ever open a salad joint, there's going to be the Joey salad. It's, <laughs> it's, it's going to be lumberjack grand slam. <laughs> we'll just name it as, as, as big as it humanly possible. Salad. It's going to come with a little like planter shovel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be an actual shovel. <laughs> I'm thinking, man. I'm thinking. Um, I had... Okay, so I want you to try the hoisin duck. Hoisin or peking? Oh, yeah, the hoisin. Yeah. I don't know if it's hoisin or peking, the style of it. It was, it was hoisin. Hoisin? Yeah. Okay, yeah. My God, if you're ever on the Ossington Strip, get that salad. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I know you hyped it up. I was, I, they, they ran out they when ran we out. went. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't able to try it out. Yeah. But like, yeah, you were, you were hyping it up. That's the spot. Yeah. yeah. So Rebecca and Kaiser, uh, Rebecca and Kaiser, Rebecca and Haley, shout out you two. Yeah. Uh, they took me there for the first time. And right. I'm like, a salad. <laughs> no, it was good. Yeah. Um, yeah we well, were, no, 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 the salad is incredible. Like even the, the lumberjack salad was like, it was a hardy ass salad. Yeah. You were, you were going in on it. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, okay, 20 bucks a salad and not cheap. No, no, no. But I felt like I got $20 worth of food. No, I was full. Yeah. yeah. I was full. Yeah. Like, it was quite dense. Yeah. <laughs> dense salad. <laughs> uh, but we're down on, on Ossington. We're meeting up with um, Scott and Maddie who work with us at Sage. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So they're doing a, a pretty cool fundraiser. Uh, well, they're participating in it. Uh, the Save Your Scruff fundraiser. Save Your Scruff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah April 29th, uh, which oh, we will be attending. We will be attending. <sighs> Not as guests of honor, but as regular paying people. We we'll work, work something out here. Uh, I mean, maybe, do you have any like jazz that can... Oh, we, or we do it? No, we'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save it. Okay. There's a spot of the podcast for that. Yeah, it's, it's meant for. Um, but yeah, they're doing a really good fundraiser. It's uh, to celebrate nine years of dog rescue and advocacy. And uh, we, my dad's got a rescue dog, little Chloe. We got her from Texas. Yeah. yeah, yeah Call yeah. her little Beyonce. <laughs> uh, it's, it's incredible what, what a family can do for a dog. Like yeah. when we got this dog, it was scared of everything. Right. She, she didn't want to catch a ball. Like she wouldn't fetch. Right. Just like terrified to, to yeah. just do anything. Do anything. Yeah. And it took a good two, three months. My dad's amazing with dogs and he really worked Chloe into like, finding love I don't know what to say but like the dog is like now she chases squirrels she loves chasing the ball and fetch and all that stuff and she's a dog yeah you know she's a fun loving dog now yeah that's amazing yeah so I'm, I'm excited for that and I found out 
you have a cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. There is a cat that lives in our household, I will say. <laughs> so, I, I like that. You don't have it. You kind of just are responsible for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. I'm responsible for not letting it go outside and making sure it doesn't starve. Otherwise, it does what it wants, when it wants. <laughs> What's the cat's name? His name is Roger. Roger. Yeah, it's a suiting. He is, uh, it's, it's exactly, yeah, he is a, she is a tough cat to live with. <laughs> How old is he? No clue. Okay. Yeah, he was, I think he was actually also a rescue. Oh, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It was, um, it was Molly's mom's cat originally. Mm. So it got passed down to us. Nice. Uh, and yeah, uh, wake up with a couple scratches here and there, <laughs> knocking glasses off the counter in the middle of your sleep. The cat, the cat's knocking. <laughs> oh yeah. No question. When it's, uh. when it's ready to, uh, to wake you up, it will do what it wants to do. So you're a cat or dog person. Oh, I'm a dog person. Same. Yeah. 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 But, I can watch, see, I can watch cats like a TV. Like I okay. I just sit and watch them as like as entertainment. But yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, when I see a dog, it's, it's over. Yeah. I love dogs. Yeah. Well, so Scotty and, uh, Scott and Maddie had their dog, Leo. Right. Looked like Chewbacca. And we we're like, I'm like, Joey, I think we need a dog in our lives. And it was so calm. Oh my God. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out Leo the dog. Man. Yeah. yeah. He's got his own Instagram too. So does yeah. he? Yeah, he does. Oh, yeah. Definitely fo- put in the show notes. Yeah. yeah <laughs> but uh, April 29th, we're going to be at the fundraiser. If you want to come out and party with us and some crazy dogs. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, tickets are still on sale. Go to save your scruff. I assume.com or just Google save your scruff. Yeah. So find it. yeah, yeah, yeah. It. I'm excited for it. It's going to be nineties theme. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's right too. Yeah. We got to get clothes. We got to get some gear. Yeah. What are we going to wear? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. We'll figure something out. It'll be cool. Do you want to go nineties themed? Yeah. We got to do yeah? nineties themed. Parachute pants, vanilla. Oh man. We don't full parachute <laughs> For those of you, oh, we are on YouTube and I'm dancing. The, the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to shout out to YouTube. Um, oh, that was cool. Uh, yeah. And they're great people, Maddie and Scott and Maddie. Oh, they're great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. just like genuinely good people. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed them. Um, I wanted to have this week's show sponsored by them. Yeah, that's right. But guess what they went and did? They went and sold. In one day, in one, one, 24 hours. Yeah. Time. yeah. <laughs> they had a really sweet two bedroom, uh, two plus one. Should I do radio voice? Just for the hell of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, 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 no. You gotta, if you're going to go into it, you got to commit to it. All right. <laughs> this week's show was supposed to be sponsored by Scott and Maddie's new listing at the Carla, but they sold it in one day. Located at 1190 Dundas Street West, its two plus one layout was priced incredibly well at $775,000. Dollars. Stars. Ooh, the echoes, the echoes. <laughs> Doing what I can here. Well, they sold it, so congrats to them. High yeah. five to them. High five to them. All right. You had some success. You won a three person bidding war. Yes, I did. Yeah. It was uh man, it was it was a off f- on the fly, man. Yeah. But uh but yeah, yeah. I was at the Raptors game. You called me, you texted me like I'm doing an offer tonight. Yeah. Like, just text me. I'm getting my heart broken here. Uh, yeah, yeah. So kudos to you for winning a three person. Yeah. And it was the activity like was crazy. On yeah. It. So he's our, um, he's already had two offers prior to the offer uh, of the competing that we did. Yeah. So in total there was, so we, yeah, we competed uh, against four and there was two before that. Wow. So yeah, it definitely had some action on it. Wow. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I was golfing. I went golfing on Friday. Uh, Scarlet Woods Golf Course. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. So I was like, first time out, get a good 18 holes in. By the 12th hole, I had to jump off because my client, who we've lost a couple times with in Brampton, found a place. And I love when this comes together because we lost one and it was a really big heartbreaker. Right. Um, but she's like, this is the house for me. Right. And when, when a client tells me that, I'm like, screw golf. We're getting you that house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I drove out to Brampton. And I was there at like three o'clock. It, first day on the market, by the time I did my showing, there was already an offer registered. Oh my God. Yeah. And by the time we submitted, there's a total of three offers, <laughs> but I was not losing this one. I'm getting, I'm getting the same type of like, yeah, the, 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 the vibes are, yeah. yeah I said like the, the panic and the, the extremely quick movements. Oh, it is so stressful. Yeah. You're driving up there and you're like, I, I can't lose this for her. Yeah. You know, let alone I'm sitting in traffic for like six hours to get there. I, I got to get this for her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I got it. We're super happy. She's super stoked. And, uh, the best part about this story is she actually got it for less than the house she lost out on. All right. That's a victory. Sometimes, you know, it timing is, yeah. The definitely. world works in strange ways. Yeah, exactly. But the house that, then this truly is the best house out of everything we saw. So she got the best home for a significantly lower price than the price, the house there she lost is. out on. That's it. Right. Yeah. Congrats. The I congrats. get a high five. Yeah, that's a high five worthy. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> and we got, uh, well, we're going to say this. We got a penthouse coming out. I'm going to get it. We're getting a stage this week. So Eglinton and Young, 
39 Roehampton. Yeah. We've got now the proper Primo Penthouse. The Penthouse. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're just about that life and you don't want nobody living above you, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> it's coming up. I'm excited for that. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry. sorry. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I was, uh, I was actually going to... Pivot? Well, yeah. Let's We're do the pivot. pivot. All right. Yeah, it's pivot time. Do we have a pivot sound? Oh. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah. Pivot time. <laughs> <laughs> you said, that's good I'll use, right. yeah, yeah, we'll use it <laughs> alright well we're in pivot time we're now. in pivot time so in saying all that there's a, a crazy amount of activity that we've seen coming back no surprise here yep. and it's time to have a talk with sellers on how to make them the world's greatest <laughs> sellers yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for completing my sentence there I love it um, because yeah I mean don't get, we, we all know the basics you know keep your house clean painted yada yada curb appeal but there's there's a little bit more to it yeah there is that the, I want to get into there's the stuff that that people don't usually talk about and I think well the first thing that I think we're we've got on our list here is what happens behind the scenes yeah uh, not so much the easy yeah like you said not so much the easy you got to clean up declutter it but you're having a conversation as things are happening with your realtor who is your partner in crime oh yeah this situation so I'll let you kind of kick this one off. I'm going to need a jazz intro. Oh, please. Yeah. If I'm going to get into tip one, let the people hear what they want. <laughs> tip one. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't expecting the cat calls in there. I liked it. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's what's jazz. It's all about like off the cuff. Yeah, it's like it's just scat, yeah, it's scat, scatty. Yeah. Scat it over there. Scat it all over this place. All right. Tip one. <laughs> Open honesty. I think open honesty is truly the first goal a realtor and a seller should be working towards. Yeah. We got to be on the same page. One billion percent. Yeah. And I would give this advice. If you're interviewing realtors, the commission's important. The price you're going to get is important. But trusting that person is a supreme be all end all. Yeah. You got to be completely comfortable to tell them, this is my price. This is what I need you to get. Yeah. And I need to hear that. What you shouldn't be doing is just hoping somebody gives you some crazy high price and going with that person. You need to be very clear about what your goals are and what you want. Yeah. And you can only do that if you have that trust with your realtor. Right. So pick a realtor you can trust and you're willing to be completely open and honest about. Yeah. You don't want to be picking somebody and feeling like you're, you're trying to play mind games with the guy that you're working with. You, you, you want to be in a situation where it's, it is, it is as if he's an extension of what you're, what you are looking for. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got to be willing to be like, this is my price and not like, Oh, you know, just get me the highest number right now. I don't think all sellers know what their price is, right? Cause they might have a subjective number in their mind. So we have a responsibility as well. And kind of how I'll, I run things is I'll come out, I'll look at your home, I'll go back, I'll do my research and I'll give you a range. If it's under 2 million, probably within 50,000, if it's over 2 million, within 100K of where I think we could get your place sold at. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where the magic happens. If your expectations and the market price cross each other, we're going to do some beautiful things. Right. And if they don't, tell me that. If you're like, no, no, I really need this number and I don't think I can get it for you. Hey, kudos. I'll move on. Right. And if someone else can deliver that, work with them. Right. But pick someone you can be truly open and honest with. No secrets. Can't hold back. Yeah. Right. Um, because for us to execute flawlessly, I need to know with crystal clear clarity what it is you want and looking for. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like, tell me, like, maybe you just want to test the market. That's okay. If I know that I can create a strategy around that. Right. If you need to be out in three months, let's say the kids are starting school in September or vice versa, they want to you know, be done by a certain time. Tell me that. The more I know, the better I can come up with a strategy that will help you execute on that goal. Yep. So open honesty would be my, if you want to be the world's greatest seller, you got to be ready to be open with your realtor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shall we talk about big tip number two? <laughs> that sounded wrong, but yes. <laughs> Let's get into big tip number two. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> All right, we're good. <laughs> it's been a long week. It is, absolutely. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> let's, talk about, uh, let's talk about being open to change. Yes. 
the conversations that happen prior to listing your place. Yeah. Um, and what it takes to kind of sell it at the premium that you can sell it for. Yeah. Whatever that price is at the highest price point. Um, there are some things that you might have to do to kind of get it to that point and make it make it show ready so that it looks like a piece of art. Yeah. Um, and really give anybody walking in there the impression that they can live there. They can live there. Yeah. yeah. They're not getting a hand me down, right? They're not spending their life savings on something that is it's used and abused. They want it, they want to feel like it's uh, their home. Like it's their home. Yeah. yeah. And so the experience we had on Friday when she went in there, my client went in there, she's like, this feels like home. Right. And so when a seller can execute on that, that's when you're going to get some really good results. Yes. Um, I think the first thing to mention on this tip is like how we sell is not how we live. Right. So when we put together a listing, you know, we stage it, we paint it, we make it looking as good as possible. Nobody lives like that. Yeah. I got tchotchkes everywhere. Yeah. My house has Legos and a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> In fact, when I sold my place, it was the same thing. I had a really hard time taking my Legos down and replacing it with a plastic olive tree. <laughs> <laughs> I told Renee the stager, I'm like, what, an olive tree? <laughs> but it looked damn good. So I was like, all right, let's go with it, right? But I had to be open myself to saying like how I live day to day is not going to appeal to the masses. Right. So you have to be open to changing the layout and the look of your house. Yes. Letting a stager come in, instilling their knowledge on what would be best, which pieces to use, what to take out, what to declutter. Right. Right. Um, may I say, <clears throat> maybe I'll put it in this way. Yeah. Think of it as, um, the time that you're, you're thinking about selling the, the day that it hits the market, you have to almost think of it as you no longer live there anymore. Fair. I like that. And you have to start thinking of it as I'm now showing it for the next person. And yeah. I am, I'm officially, I've had my, my time here. Exactly. I, I one of these, uh, I don't know, influencers, one of these, maybe it was Tony Robbins and those type of people. Yeah. He said something that, uh, really stuck with me. We truly don't own any house. We just take care of it for a period of time. <laughs> nice, yeah, huh? I don't right? like that. Yeah, yeah. Cause like my grandmother's had her house for 80 years. Right. That's a long time. She wasn't the only owner. There were people before her who yeah. owned that house. Right, right. And so for 80 years, we took damn good care of it, but that's the point. It's going to be passed on to someone else for the next 80 years. Yep. And so I think if you keep that mantra in your mind, it's like, hey, this house has served me well. It's time to move on from it. Let me make it ready for the next person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like um, yeah, you really, you know thinking about depersonalizing it and just taking down any personal stuff. And yeah. If we're talking about decluttering and things like that, yeah, this is where that information kind of comes into play Yeah, is it is, it's very much like <clears throat> you don't, you, yeah. I mean, we kind of went, went through it, but uh, yeah, you don't want to walk in and, and think to yourself, somebody else lives here. Yeah. yeah. Depersonalize as much as possible and just trust the process, right? Because we'll come in and, and this can be a little bit overwhelming. It's like I met with my realtor and three weeks later I have a completely different home. Right. Right. So just be open that, yeah, things will get, not sticky, but like change. We're going to turn your place upside down yeah. to make it ready. Right. Because we're trying to appeal to the most amount of people. And the more a seller is open to all that and willing to take their furniture out and put it in storage and bring in new stuff and you know, whatever else we suggest, the better the process goes. Yes. And I find the sellers that are like, I love these type of, this type of personality. They're like, do whatever you want. Just get it done. Right. That to me is the best sentence I could hear. Right. It's like, thank you for the trust. I'm going to rock and roll with it. We're going to get some crazy results for you. Let me do my thing. Yeah. And that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just the magic, just boom. Yeah. Right. Tip three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just tip three. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to stick to the script on this one. <laughs> uh, tip three. Keep the receipts. Keep the receipts. Yeah. yeah. So when you do work on your house, um, whether it's taking down a wall, redoing a kitchen, putting an addition, Keep all of that documentation. Yes. Because when the job's done, we get a nice, beautiful, finished product. But the potential buyer can't see how much dollar and value you've brought into the house. When we have the receipts, we could then put that together in a nice little package to really add that extra oomph to the sale. Yeah. To say like, hey, looks pretty. Behind the wall, it's even prettier. Yeah. And here's the receipts to prove it. Yes. I've... Sorry, you say something. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Keep going. I'm on a roll here. Yeah, today. you're killing yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, I made a really good espresso this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm on fire. I'm good for like six hours here. Uh, we can do a marathon today. Um, no, uh, lost my train of thought. Why did I have that espresso? <laughs> I, uh, it does that to you sometimes. What I was saying was that um, 
you know, I'll walk into a listing and they'll be like, oh, we did all this work. And I'm like, great. Do you have the proof to back it up? No. Well, I can't factually tell someone that $100,000 was put into this house if I can't really back it up. Right. I mean, we can suggest it and point it out. But when you've got the receipts, it just gives the buyer that much more confidence in your property. That, That's right. Wow. These guys really did the full nines on it. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in, including, um, we're talking permits and documentation, all that stuff is mm. very, very good to keep. The more things that you can send to the other side and the more things as you're going through this, the, the processes that you're able to send to the other side, it gives buyers confidence. And like, I think that's something to point out is yeah. that you want to give the, the person that's going to be putting an offer in the most amount of confidence so that when they're putting their offer in, it comes in as confident as possible because that's going to give you the best price. It's going to give you the best conditions. It's going to, your terms are going to be met like much better because there's no question marks and red flags that to be looking out for. I like that buyer psychology insight you just provided because you're often the guy working with the buyers yeah. and like you see that, that if they, they're looking at five homes, if one of the homes has a nice, beautiful package with permits, uh, drawings, everything there for them to see, they're like, well, let's go for this one yeah. because we're going to have, we, we're okay maybe pushing the budget a bit to have that peace of mind for the years ahead that work was done right in this house. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Um, and that's like, that's, and I've got to find a way to package that up to explain this better to sellers that having that there is is so super important. Yes. So if you're planning a rental this year, you know, keep the receipts, keep all that nice and packaged. Yeah. And as a little bonus tip, take photos and video. I was going to say, yeah, you can also, yeah, take, take the photos of behind the walls and take the photos of it as it's coming. The, the process. Yeah. 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 Like that's so helpful to show them. And then they feel like a part of that process as well. Yeah. And they feel okay paying it because it's like, wow, I've seen the work that's been done there. Well, not only that, that, that that's a selling feature in itself. Like you, you're able, if you're, if you end up purchasing that property, that's something you're proud of. And you can, you can show that to the next yeah. person. You pass can, it on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. If you're there for five years, you can bring it on to the next person. And um, warranty is, is the other big one. Yeah. Especially with roofs. Uh, sometimes a roofer may give you a 10 year warranty. Well, if you move right. within that time, you could pass that warranty on to the next person. Yeah. Roof windows. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Newly installed, uh, anything that's newly installed. Yeah. Documentation, take pictures. Um, all that stuff is good. That's gold. And that's yeah. the work that you put in, right? Yeah. And that's where that brutal honesty, going back to point one, is so important. If we could have that open, candid conversation about the work you've done and you could provide me with all that, well, that makes my job that much more easier to market your property in the best possible way. Yeah. Help me help you, baby. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. We got some um, okay. mindset. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, no, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. Was there a song coming? <laughs> Man, I'm always ready with the jazz song. <laughs> I was on high alert there. Get into scat man mode. Da, 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 da. Joey's coming with a couple bonus <laughs> notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Coming from, uh, I wanted to give a couple bonus notes coming from the buyer side. Preach. I like that. Uh, because yes, like I said, I, I do, I am, I do work more uh, primarily with the buyer side of things. So yeah. I figured I should give this perspective. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I want to uh, mention behind, um, you know, if you're prepping things for sale, pre-home inspections, mm. um, maybe an obvious one, maybe not, but, um, not obvious enough. Right. Okay. I wish more people did include a pre-listing home inspection. So it, good. Yeah. If, if we're talking specifically about get, making buyers feel comfortable and confident in uh, putting an offer in on your property, having that inspection done gives so much peace of mind. Yep. Uh, and there's a lot, you can take a look, you know exactly what you're in for. Um, and it, it, that's it. Like once again, you're bringing confidence to the buyer. Well, sorry, just to jump in, you've also now disclosed everything and anything you potentially know about the property. Yes. And that is, from a seller standpoint, let's say you have um, old electrical in the house. Right. You have knob and tube wiring in the house. The home inspection report reveals that. Well, now you could work that into your pricing. That's right. So the buyer won't come back and be like, I want 25K off the price because we just discovered it. No, no. We've already disclosed it and worked it into our price. That's right. So big value there. Yes. Yeah. You don't want any special surprises that come afterwards. Yeah. yeah. They can kibosh the deal and put all that effort into uh, to the trash. Yeah, exactly. One, uh, one tip that was actually, uh, I think might be very useful is from the seller standpoint, when it comes to pre-home inspections, um, use a reputable company, mm. use one of the big guys. If you're on the seller side. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get it. If you're on the buyer side, you have somebody you trust that you, that's going to give you a straight, honest opinion. Yes. Use whoever you want to use. But on the seller side, if you're a stranger to a stranger, you want to see those Carson Dunlop titles. Yeah. You want to see, um, you know, you want to see. That, that brings a lot more safety to you. Yep. I got three companies I could yeah. shout out. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Uh, Carson Dunlop. Yep. We use them the most. Yeah. Um, Baker Street Inspection. Yes. Really like them as well. Smaller outfit, but like those guys are incredibly knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. They're home, ex-home builders, engineers type style. 
and uh, pillar to post. Right. Those are kind of the three that I like to see if I'm working with a buyer and when I'm suggesting for uh, sellers, that's the pool that I'm referring from. Yes. Yeah. And that, that's exactly. So if, if, and this has happened before where if an inspection comes in from a private company or a solo guy, yeah, what ends up happening is that the buyers are going to come in and they may, they may end up there. There's more of a chance that they'll ask for another inspection, right? Because they'll want to have it done either by one of the big guys or by somebody that they trust. Uh, and that, that kind of, you know, you're leaving holes in the air again. Yeah. Um, and more opportunity for, for pulling some, some things out of the blue that you didn't expect. Uh, so use, if you're on the seller side, pre-inspection, amazing idea and use one of the big companies. Even if you got somebody you trust on your end, just use one of the big companies. It's you're better off that way. Yep. Um, you want to talk about pets? I did. I wrote pets in there. We were on pet conversation. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. No, no, I like it. Uh, so pets, if you do have pets, um, this kind of goes back to the same thing where you want to depersonalize everything. Um, if you have an opportunity to remove that pet for the time of showings, or if you have an opportunity not to, not to put in the show notes that, or not to put in the, uh, notes that they're, you know, don't let the cat out or don't let the dog out. Yeah. I highly, highly suggest just finding a place, finding a home for them for the time being. What's the craziest pet you've seen in a house? Okay. So <laughs> the craziest pet? Yeah. Or I haven't, I haven't, seen, an, I haven't yeah. seen an exotic pet. Okay. But I have, at one point I went to a showing and there was three dogs in cages Oof. throughout the living room. It wasn't, they weren't even hidden. They were just like right in plain yeah. sight. They were barking at us the entire time we were showing the property. And there was two cats that were rubbing up on our legs <laughs> the entire time we were in there. It was Jumanji. The, yeah. <laughs> felt like it. Vines growing on the walls. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to do the Jurassic Park theme song and I realized it's not Jumanji. You know that? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was my, that was the worst. And uh, needless to say, the showing did not go well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Talk about calm and tranquility with a dog. Yeah. Do three dogs barking. And a you. cat. Yeah. <laughs> rubbing up on you. Ugh. Yeah. So absolutely. If you have an opportunity to get them away from the house for the time being, please do it. I, I've seen a lot of wild animals. Oh, what's the most, okay. What's your exotic? You feel, you, I've seen bats in a house. Yeah. Caged bats in a house. Oh, they were sleeping, but okay, still yeah. like <laughs> there's, there's a bat. Yeah. There's an odor that for sure comes with that. Uh, I, I mean, I, I just walked out of the room. I didn't really <laughs> linger too long there. I've seen snakes. I've seen like big boy snakes in, in homes, but the craziest pet experience I've ever had was it was a, a condo in the Blue and Islington area. We walked in and they had just concrete floors exposed. So they took up all the um, uh, laminate hardwood flooring. Yep. And I was like, oh, that's odd. Why is that the case? They had bunny rabbits everywhere. <laughs> Dude, there was 15 bunny rabbits. Poop, pee, everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> It was cute. And that stunk. I, of that smell, I could I could recall. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, <laughs> 15 rabbits? <laughs> Jesus. That was, yeah, that was a wild one. So please, if you have bunnies, send them to the farm or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just get them out. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? Uh, first impressions. Yeah, first impressions. So first impressions are truly everything. Mm. Um, any, if you're going to set something up, you want to make sure that when that door opens, even our, when you pull up to the driveway is one thing. Yeah. Curb appeal. Curb appeal yeah. and you have that. But the second you open the door, you want to you want to make an impression. Yeah. Especially, and I'll say especially lately, when when things are heated and things are moving very quickly, sometimes buyers will be walking in and they only have that 15 minute showing. You want to make sure when they open the door that that impression hits right away. You know the Brampton deal I did had? Yeah. Chocolates. In the, in the front doorway? Full size chocolates. <laughs> Not like Halloween, you know. They were giving them to, to guests or was it just like displayed? No, no, giving them to guests. Okay. I hope. <laughs> I took a lot. <laughs> I had I had a Kit Kat and an arrow. <laughs> I felt so guilty. I'm like, I'm definitely on camera eating chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eating but that was a nice touch, I think. <laughs> no, but you know, on that note, I've always had this uh, concept of like, I would love to have a certain scent that when someone walks into our listing, it's like, oh, this is a Mark and Joey listing. So yeah, you, you actually mentioned that to me way back yeah. then. And I, I did it in the penthouse, in the sub penthouse. I right, okay. Yeah. And, and it, you notice that stuff yeah. and it, it's stuff that you, you know, if, if somebody smoked in a house for 30 years, yeah. like you're going to smell that right away and it's going to be a huge turnoff. Yep. Uh, but if you have, if it, it, it's, it's all about that. You open the door and boom, what's, yeah, this is it. This is now it. Scent. I don't know. I'm going to mess this science that up, but it's like, that's the first or the most active of your senses that are, that's triggered and that can have the biggest impact on someone's decision. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. If you walk into a bat cave, <laughs> you're going to walk out. If you walk into a place that smells like the one hotel in Miami, you're going to be like, all right, 
<laughs> it's got some pina coladas going here, right? So <laughs> that's what we're trying to instill with the whole smell and scent thing. But that's a good point with the pets and the first impression. It's yes. really got it. It's got to smack right off the top. We're gonna be like, Pow. yeah, right away. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna mention. I'm gonna mention this to for for an investment property. Mm. Uh, I'll take a little bit of a of a turn. If you have a tenant in there uh, and you're going to be selling with a tenant inside, um, I, this is kind of, it doesn't need to be said, but make sure you keep a good relationship. Do everything you can to make sure that that relationship runs as smooth as possible. Yeah. They can turn a deal sideways very quickly. They can make the whole selling process a nightmare. Yeah. Um, We've been through it. We have. Yeah, we have. We just, we just we were. Just, yeah. Same thing. I've had showings where I've walked in. Uh, there was one showing I remember in particular where I walked into the house and the tenant was there, the tenant stayed and he was pointing out all of the issues that mm. he would leave. He was living in there. He would leave mold in the corners and he would point at this. I've tried to wash it a hundred times and this mold keeps coming back. Wow. All uh, just, they can, they can make the selling process very, very, yeah. very, very uh, troublesome. I had a listing where the tenant didn't want to leave and uh, she had a cat and the cat was catching mice, I guess. Right. She would put the, the dead mice in different parts of the house. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a, 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 yeah. And like, what do we, yeah. Yeah. So, so point make, is, the point is make sure you keep a very good relationship. Yeah. You want, you want cooperation on both sides because you're, you're, you know, and here's, here's something that maybe I'll point out too. If you want a tenant out before you sell, know that you can't actually just tell them to, you can't kick them out. Very it's, good point. Um, you, there's processes involved. Oh, and yeah. If you see, this is the thing though. If you do want them, uh, and you're thinking that life is going to be much easier if I do, uh, I'm going to shout out uh, B- uh, Bita Delizi. Yeah. From uh, Sto- uh, Stonegate. Yeah. They. She's a paralegal. They deal with tenants specifically for th- this exact purpose. Yep. Whether you have a troublesome tenant or have uh, are looking to sell and and you're you want to make a deal prior to yeah selling. They approach them because they'll they get free consultation and they'll kind of set you up on that path. Yeah, they've saved the skin of my hair, if that's the saying. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of times, they're great. They they're they're always quick to get back to you, and they've been through this plenty of times. Yes. So they could really help advise you on the best process to working with a tenant. Yeah. I mean, I go back to like just be a good human and talk to them first and foremost. Yes. Yeah see what their plans are because sometimes they may be already thinking of leaving yes and you don't have to go through the whole process of trying to work on an eviction just have that human conversation and then work with them yes that is that's the cleanest way it doesn't involve any there's no there's no bullying it's just a a nice clean way to have a conversation and yeah things can go things can go very smoothly that way yeah all right let's maybe do a rundown of our three tips let's do it yeah Open honesty. Open honesty. Be able to talk to your realtor, tell them exactly what you want and don't want. Yep. Be open to change. Be open to change. Yeah. You're yep. going to have to turn your world upside down for a couple of weeks. It's going to suck, but I promise you the results will be spectacular. They will be much better than, than trying to fight it. Uh, and tip number three, you keep, want to keep the receipts. Let's do it again. You can do it a little bit better. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Some other voice. Hold on a second. Tip number three. Tip number three. Keep. The pussy. Woo! Hercules! 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 <laughs> I like it. Uh, yes. Keep and then, the receipts. Yeah. Every, every, any work that you do, keep it documented. You want to give the buyers as much confidence as possible. Yeah, and I'll leave you with this. Um, you know, if you're thinking of selling, it, the process doesn't happen overnight. It takes about three to four weeks to pull off everything we're saying with flawless execution. Yeah. And sometimes longer if you've got to do a little bit more substantial repairs. So if you are thinking of selling, you want to start these conversations about three to four weeks out, if not more, if you're going to be interviewing several agents, just so you have all your bases covered and you're ready to go. Yep. You want to kind of aim either for the spring to late early summer market or the fall to late fall market. That's kind of the ideal times. And so you want to plan out, like if you're thinking of coming to market in May, early April is when you should be talking. Simple math. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Any shout outs you want to give? Uh, Shout outs. Yes. I do want to give a shout out to the Grain Studio. Ooh. Uh, yes. Ooh. Green Studio. A- A- AJ and uh, and Al Souza, they're, they're, they do great work. Uh, they're in Dundalk, actually, way up in Dundalk. Where is Dundalk? Yeah, north. Very north. How far? <laughs> uh, past Bolton, like, by... Are these the wood guys? Yeah. Oh, dude, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to shut up. I just want to hear all about them. Yeah, they do. So we, uh, they're friends of, uh, friends of my dad, and uh, they do chicken uh, boards. Big Domenico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your dad. <laughs> yeah. okay. I call him Big Domenico. I don't even know if he's big, but that's, that's funny. Uh, that, but they also, so they do that for, for, um, for us, but they also do, and it's customized, um, mm. and they also do, what their, what their big thing is, is they do uh, 
tables. They do tables. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, like live edge? Coffee tables. They've done bed frames as well. Nice. Uh, yeah. Cust- all custom work and just like they look incredible. We're right. going to have a link in the show notes to that. Yeah. You can take a look at their Instagram yeah. and see the work that they do. I would have brought my charcuterie board. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big Dom got me a custom charcuterie board. This thing is incredible. Yeah. It says my name on it. Yeah, it's heavy too. It's not, they're not like, like, no, yeah. <laughs> like I got a good workout on that one. A little bit of peck action and the curls there. Does that make sense? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the curls. Yeah. All right, whatever. It was heavy, uh, but he put the logo in it. It said my name on it. Yep. Like that was, I really like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, they do, honestly, they do great work. I'm going to bring it in next episode. As you're watching on video, I'm going to bring yeah, it. Yeah, we'll bring it. Yeah, as, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll have some coffees. Maybe I make a charcuterie board for us. Oh, Would you oh like that? yeah, hundred percent. Let's All do right. that. Yeah, I have a deli grinder at home. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'll make a charcuterie board. So shout out them. What's the name of the company? Uh, the Grain Studio. Are they on Instagram? They are on Instagram. You'll link all that in the we'll show notes. We'll link everything in the show notes. I like it. I want to shout out Jason the Freeze Freezing for always hooking me up. Like the thing with our industry is like there's not a lot of people I like talking to in our industry. Right. He's one of them I do like talking to. Yeah, yeah. So chill, super down to earth, always a good time, and like just shooting the breeze. Um, he's got, we're going to be attending one of his, um, market updates. So we'll have a little bit more stats with the way the mortgages are going in the coming weeks. I think, oh God, did we miss it? I better check the calendar. <laughs> uh, Jay, if we missed it, we're sorry, but shout out to you. You're the man. Uh, shout out Mandy's on Ossington. Yeah. Shout out Mandy's. Apparently that's a franchise. They're like big in Montreal. I didn't know that. Either did I. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But if you're in Montreal or on the Ossington strip, check out Ma- uh, Mandy's. Yeah, we'll link up uh, on the show notes yeah. as well. I also think they're on Kitchen Hub. You know, like the, the uh, yeah. ghost kitchen thing? Yeah. yeah. I think they're on Kitchen Hub. Um, and Save Our Scruffs, let's shut out. Yeah. I always say Scott and Maddie, but you know what, Scott? I'm putting Maddie before you. It's Maddie and Scott. Shut out Maddie and Scott. <laughs> Too bad. That's the way we're rolling with it. Um, <laughs> looking forward to parting with him at the Save Your Scruff event. That'll if you great. want to come out, tickets are I think like $110. Yeah. That's a great there. cause. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently the swag bag is going to be out of this world. The swag bag makes up that right away. Apparently, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm there for the swag. Yeah. <laughs> I was about the swag. Um, I'm good with that. Yeah, beautiful weather. Let's go enjoy it. Let's do it. Chase some ice cream trucks. That's a whole other story for a whole other episode. <laughs> All right, high five. Awesome. Good episode. Thanks for listening to the Toronto Living's Real Estate Podcast. You could find more information on how we work over at Toronto Living's with an S dot com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter to get price reports from over 150 different neighborhoods in the city each and every month. If you got any value, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And if you made it this far, thanks for listening.